you're starting out in Fusion 360 and you want to build something like this robot arm, does this take a bunch of commands and knowing advanced features? No. Let's talk about the 12 different commands you do need to know to build an assembly like this. And these 12 commands actually come from Jeff Strader, Phil Eckmeyer. It's a terrific course from Autodesk University. Uh, it's about an hour, but I'm going to condense it for you in about 10 minutes. Here we go. So what are these 12 commands that you need to learn when you're learning Fusion 360? So in getting started and learning Fusion, you can think of it like you would learning another language, where you want to focus on those critical commands, being able to ask where the restroom is, ask for help, things like that, not die. And then it's similar to fusion in the same way you need to learn those critical commands and then grow your vocabulary from there. And in the class, Jeff made the point that there's actually 1,488 commands. That's kind of overwhelming to think about, but kind of interesting that we're now going to only focus on 12. So the all right, so this list of commands, they've broken them out even by kind of assembly, sketch, and create. So the features in purple here, uh, the sketch tools in green, and then kind of this orange color is assembly. So talking through that, let's jump right in. For the first part, we want to build this simple block, and we're going to use all of these different commands to get started. All right, for the first thing in Fusion 360 is go up, create a new component. It's a right click, and then you can give it a name. So we're gonna be creating designs within each component. So we'll start there. It's active. You'll notice the little dot next to the name. We're starting a sketch on the front plane, then doing a rectangle. Rectangle is helpful because it creates symmetry and adds some constraints automatically. Then we'll use Smart Dimension to dimension the two sides. Select the dimension, give it a value. And now that we have the right size and it's fully constrained because it's even on the origin, you can just hit Extrude. E for Extrude. But you want to notice some things off to the right. When they say you need to know Extrude, it's a little misleading because there is a lot you can do in Extrude. Notice that you can do the start and end state, you can do different directions, you can even do different termination endings. So there's a lot you can learn and utilize in the extrude command. So put in your values for the extrude, we'll do the distance, hit accept, and next we're gonna to go to create and find the whole command. You can choose from a wide variety of different whole styles. You can set the termination and we want it to go all the way through. We'll drag it to wake up this diameter size, type in the value, and we have our hole. And I think they use the hole because there's just so many different options. It's so much more powerful than a simple hole. Next, we want to use an as-built joint because it's already been designed in the right place. You want to do this with your first component, select it, use rigid, and make it rigidly connected to the top node or to the assembly name. Okay, so some of the takeaways as we went through the Fusion 360, um, just the best way to start your assembly, you should create component, make it active, add sketches and features, and then you want to connect the sketch geometry to the origin and then fully define it, which makes it easier to edit in the future. So in this video, we're talking about the 12 commands, the bare minimum, so that you can start and get started with Fusion 360. But that's exactly why I created the Fusion 360 Jumpstart, to help you move from beginner into more advanced, capable to build just about anything you need to in Fusion 360. Check it out. Link below. And now for the second component, we're going to introduce some additional topics, mainly the sketch line using sketch dimensions, fillets, and some others. Now we want to create a new component. So I'll activate the top level, right click, new component, give it a name. And now we have our second component and we're going to start that design. It will be automatically activated. So we're already building it. And then I can select the face. Uh, this other backside face and start sketching. I'm going to go up to circle and use the circle command. That's another one of our commands. Drop in a dimension for the diameter and now we have our circle. We're going to extrude that. Now just being careful, another powerful thing with extrude, you can choose different profiles like exclude the hole, include the hole. I want to have all of it solid so I select everything 
and then extrude that distance. And now we want to reuse that hole that we left open and we're going to do a little shaft. Um, you can select through by clicking and holding and it'll let you select different things. I'm extruding that cylinder area and I select the uh, end of the box in order to get the distance right. And now we have our second component. On the mounting bracket we're going to start a sketch on the back face. And what we want to do is sketch um, some rectangles, but first we'll sketch two lines. And we're going to make these construction lines. So they're not actually listing this in their list of commands, but just hit X on your keyboard or right click and make them for construction. And that allows you to use these as reference geometry. And now we want to use rectangle again. And we're going to do a rectangle up top and a rectangle on the bottom and then start dimensioning. So using the center rectangle so that I can start right from the center and drag out and then add the dimensions that I need and then I can add some lines um, to break this up and so we can make different extrude blocks or um, different extrude areas. Okay, so I sketch these two vertical lines, then I add some dimensions to the center line to get these located where they're supposed to be. And then um, this looks good. So now at the bottom, we can start sketching the other shape. Another Sidner rectangle starting right from the center line, drag it out, add the smart dimensions for the height and the width, and then uh, use either rectangles or lines to uh, break this up. So using rectangles, I'll drag those in corner to corner and then use the smart dimension to dimension these rectangles uh, to the center as well as its width. And then now we're going to have some different segments that we can extrude from. I'll go hit E for extrude and then I'll select the two top portions and do their distance. I'll wake up the visibility by going down to the sketch, hitting the little eye, and then it turns on visibility. Um, and then I'll select these areas that I want to extrude just like above. Click in the depth, hit join, hit OK. Now for the next command, it's the full round fillet. So you can click fillet and choose from your different options. But one thing that's kind of cool is you can do just select this interface and it sometimes guesses at the full round, which is very helpful. So this actually does a really nice job. I can hit OK and hit repeat command. And now what I want to do is come down and try it again. It's not solving it the way I wanted. So instead, I'll go in, select the center face and then be careful to come and select these uh, two side faces. So um, just be sure that you can select the two sides and the center, and then once it has those values, then it will uh, round it correctly. You can see I'm struggling to get the faces selected in the box I want. So there we go, that looks good. I can hit OK, um, or I also actually can just do this all in one fillet command. So I'll do center face, and then it looks like it's matching the others. I'll hit the plus sign, come over, hit that one. Looks like it's, again, solving it. Not how I wanted, so come fill in the dialogues, select the top, and then select the side two as the bottom. It solves it, hit OK, we've got our fillets done. Takes a little practice to get used to. Next, we'll do a whole command. Um, if I hover here and hover near the arc, it'll wake up the center. I can drag and it'll snap right to the center. And then I'll do it an all the way through distance or a through all and then drag for the diameter that I want. I can then type in the value that I want in that dialog that popped up for 15, hit OK. And then we can do a, a right click and repeat command to wake up another hole. And so same thing, going to drag it near the arc, wake up the center, drag it to the center, and then, you know, place the, the dimensions and values that we care about. All right, so now we want to connect these two. So the first component is already grounded, um, excuse me, not grounded, but it has a rigid joint to the top node. And so what we want to do is do a revolute joint. And one thing you want to do is select both components that we're going to be um, joining together. And what they are already in place, so it's an as-built joint. I select the two, and then um, what I want to 
also use is the preview mechanism. So if I click this center, um, and then you can hit the little play button over on the right for the joint to make sure that the motion that is allowed is has is what you designed it for, is what you want. So I love the preview. It's a good one, good one to use to make sure the joint is as needed. So in Fusion 360, what you can do is go up to this construct and use offset plane. We can select maybe this bottom face as our reference, drag it down. Now we have an a similar plane off in space, and we can even use the project capability. So this is something they showed as kind of one of their bonus tools was the ability to use project offset. So if we come down, start a sketch, and what I'd like to do is select this face down below, and it's gonna effectively resketch is if you were projecting this face down onto this lower plane. Now we have the sketch down on this lower plane, and then we can add a, get additional sketch entities and extrude, work with this, build what we need. Last few commands we need to look at, the copy paste and a joint where it's not as built. All right, so for the final command, all we need to do is create an additional um, iteration of this component, this arm, we want another arm. So we could mirror it, but that would create an additional component in the assembly structure as in a separate new file. We don't want that. We actually want this same file to be over here. And so in that case, you can do a control C, control V, and it will paste in a copy of this component. You'll even see the same name, but the iteration. I was playing with an earlier iteration, so this is now ARM3, and then we can join this up using a standard joint. Okay, so what we wanna do is go up to Joint. This is not an as-built, because it's not actually exactly where I want it to go. I wanna move it to where it connects, and we'll even leave uh, the motion for Revolute. And there we go. So hey, I hope this was helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video.